everybody, it's Morgan, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Swirl. So we're gonna take you along for a ride today to our plant to see an actual tank cleaning take place. We're also gonna be talking a little bit to field supervisors Kylie Wilkes and Jeremy Chadwick to get a play-by-play -play of exactly what goes into a tank cleaning. So if you wanna see a little bit of behind the scenes and see exactly what our team does, keep on watching. What's the first thing you guys do when you're getting ready for a tank cleaning? Uh, so we meet at the shop. Uh, in the morning, we kind of go over uh, the different paperwork, uh, what we're doing that day, and we'll kind of load the truck up. Yep. Then we head over to the plant or wherever the job site is that day, and we'll go over what we're doing. We'll meet with the contact, and we will kind of go over the hazards. We'll have our health and safety that we go over and kind of talk about what hazards we're going to run into that day, uh, what any special permits we'll need, uh, if there's any lockout we'll need to do, and then kind of set up. So set up the job, uh, make sure the back truck doesn't need grounded or bonded or anything. So what health and safety information do you kind of go over before you start the cleaning? Um, so a big one is uh, a lockout. Uh, normal tanks have all kinds of valves, inlets, outlets, uh, pumps, mixers, things like that that you're going to run into. So you want to make sure everything's locked out um, before you get in the tank. Obviously you don't want to run into anything or get tangled up or have product come in on top of you or things like that. So uh, lockout's a big one. Uh, the other one would be uh, the chemical that we're going to run into that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, like Jeremy said, if it's flammable, we want to ground the truck, things like that. Uh, if it's a caustic acid base, um, that'll kind of tell us what PPE we're going to wear mm -hmm. that day. So um, different levels of chemical require different levels of suits. Mm -hmm. so. uh, also, there's a storm shelter, uh, eye wash station, uh, where we're going to go if there's a fire, and then also the hospital. What do you do right before the tank cleaning to prepare? Uh, well, preparation, I think, uh, starts the day before, we always say. Uh, hydrating, especially on these hot days. Um, we'll also, whenever we get there, um, actually setting up everything. We'll, we'll run hose, um, bring out the uh, rescue equipment, things like that. Um, get shovels, squeegees, uh, all our PPE that we're going to need. Uh, pressure washer, run it out. What is the whole process of the tank cleaning itself? What steps do you guys kind of go through? So when we very first start to back down the tank, usually you pop a dome lid open or a valve, and you kind of back it down to where it's a safe level um, for a guy to enter. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do most of the cleaning from the outside, uh, if it's possible. Uh, most tanks need to be cleaned from the inside also. Uh, just to get the valves and get the tank clean enough to for the customer. So we'll kind of back it down to a safe level for the guy to get into. He'll get inside, he'll get the majority of the product out, and then he'll begin to wash the walls and wash the walls and bring it all to the back hose. And then basically he'll get a squeegee in and uh, dry everything up at the end. So are there any safety things that you guys do during the process to make sure that your guys in the tank stay safe? Yep, so alongside our um, normal uh, rescue equipment that we'll have by the hole, uh, we'll make sure the guy that's entering the hole has a harness. Uh, he'll always have a tagline or a retrieval of some sort on. Uh, we'll also meter the hole uh, the entire time uh, he's in there. Make sure the air is uh, good. We have a four gas meter. Uh, that we calibrate and we'll check the air to make sure he's it basically has breathable air in there the entire time. Uh, our whole watch, we're pretty much trained a lot of our whole watch is to watch for fatigue or heat stress and uh, I mean they're constantly watching the guy. They're also watching their tagline to make sure they're not going to trip over or get tangled. So what do you guys do if you see something that's unsafe inside the tank? Uh, so we have a whole watch watching the guy inside the hole the entire time. Uh, the whole watch isn't allowed to leave. That's his job to have constant communication with the guy inside the tank. So he'll monitor, like Jeremy was saying, the guy inside the tank, make sure he doesn't have any signs of heat stress or like he's getting very tired. Um, now the guy in the hole also has the right to stop work 100% uh, of the time if he feels that he's being uh, just 
outworked or if he's tired or if he feels like that the tank is being unsafe and that's how it is sometimes in the tank too it's like you'll be looking up and you'll you know we have different hand signals for different items like so if we need a squeegee we'll kind of give like a squeegee motion or right. a shovel we'll give like a general shovel motion so so you always have ways to communicate with each other yeah because so you'll be wearing a respirator and then your whole watch is wearing a respirator right. and you're all suited up and you're not talking like me and you are right here obviously so it's hard to sometimes you know so you have to get your communication down before you go right. on the tanks. So that's all we have for you today. I want to thank Kylie and Jeremy for giving us all this great information about tank cleaning and I want to thank our crew for kind of letting us crash their party a little bit. So stay tuned for more episodes and we'll see you in our next one. Bye guys!